Hi humans, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about how to realistically composite text into a shot. But first, a few examples. The first technique we'll be talking about is motion tracking to make the text appear to move with an object in your scene. Start out by making your clip into a new composite shot and tracking two points in the clip. Now, attach a point layer to that track and, uh, and parent the text to that point layer. Now, if you play the video back, you can see that the text appears to move with that object that you tracked. Depending on the camera movement in your shot, you might have to use a one point track, a two point track, or even a three point, three dimensional track. It really depends on the shot. But for most clips, a two point track should be good enough. So that's what I'm using. Next, let's talk about keying. I usually use this effect to put the text behind the horizon. Start out by making your footage into a new composite shot. Now duplicate the layer of your clip so that you have a foreground and a background layer and put the text in between those two clips. It's like an Oreo, but for visual effects. Never mind. To get rid of the sky, you might have to use two different types of keys depending on your shot. You can use either a color difference key to key out the color blue, or a luminance key if the sky is the brightest part of your image. Now just key the sky out of the foreground layer of your comp, and as long as the text is behind that, you'll have a foreground layer and a background layer with the text in between. So it appears that the text is within the clip. One effect similar to keying, but a little bit more complicated and more time consuming is masking. Masking is often used to hide or reveal text, like when you see an object move across the screen and it reveals the text behind it, or the opposite way around when an object moves in front of the text and the text disappears behind it. Now to create this effect, start out by making your footage into a new composite shot. Now the thing that you're probably about to do is to add a new mask to the text layer. Stop. Please don't do that. For your own good, please don't mask the text. Please. Instead, do the same thing that we did to do the previous effect, the keying, and duplicate your footage and drag it up above the text so that you have a foreground layer, a background layer, and the text in between. Next, find the object that you want to move in front of your text and mask it out of the top layer. This way you have a foreground layer that passes in front of the text. Instead of removing a part of the text to create the effect, you are putting something else in front of it. Now the advantage of doing it that way, instead of creating a mask on the text layer itself, is that you can change the text behind the foreground layer, so you can alter the text after you've created the mask. You can't do that if you mask the text. If you have a mask on a layer, any change that you make to that layer by rotating it, scaling it, changing the position, adding a shadow, warping it, any effect that you add to that layer will likely mess up the mask. But if the mask isn't on that layer, it's on the foreground layer instead, then you can alter the text however you want to behind that. And if you decide later on that you want to add something else in, you're not stuck. You can add in whatever you want to. You have a lot of freedom by doing it that way. The next one is pretty simple. Let's rotate the text in 3D space to fit into the scene. So if you want the text to be lined up with a wall, then you can rotate it around and scale it to where it appears that it's on that surface. If you want it to look like it's on the ground, you can make it look like it's standing up on the ground. Another effect that goes really well with that one is adding a shadow to your text. Not a drop shadow, but duplicating the layer and making it into a shadow. To create a fake shadow, duplicate your text and rotate it into the position that a shadow would be in in that scene. Then parent it to the text so that they move together. Now use a fill color effect to make that shadow layer completely black, then blur it out and reduce the opacity. Now you have a realistic shadow that fits into the scene and moves with the text. Next, let's blur the text based on where it is in the shot. For example, if the text is attached to my face, since my face is in focus in this shot, then the text can be completely in focus because that's realistic. However, if the, sh if the text was in the background, of this shot, you can see that the background is slightly blurry. So if we just add in the text 
completely without any blurring, it looks a little bit weird, but if we give it a slight blur, then it fits into the scene. Next, just make sure to animate the text to blur more or blur less if the shot changes focus. Finally, remember to always add motion blur if your text is moving. Anyway, that is it for today's video. Those were seven ways to realistically composite text into a shot. I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, please feel free to leave a like or subscribe to my channel because I upload new filmmaking tutorials every Saturday and new vlogs every Wednesday. Keep creating awesome things. See you in the next one. Bye.